Today is Sunday, January 18th, 2015, and this is the next edition of whatever I'm calling this, which brings me to my first point. Let's talk format for a little bit. I think these vlog videos are going to be now uploaded to the Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. It's a channel I started, or I created a while back when I started the Live Sound 101 video series on the Big Nate 84 channel. And um, so I just created the channel, Live Sound 101, uh, but I didn't actually do anything with it because I, at that point in time, it, I didn't really want to have two channels. And so I made eight Live Sound 101 videos and just uploaded them to the Big Nate 84. And they've been actually getting a really good response from people. I've been getting good feedback. I uh, got a community going and um, uh, there's about 200 people in the community, so it's 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 going well. So I figured, oh, I really got to get a new tribe. I'm, you know what? In my Amazon shopping cart, I have gotten a uh, quick release dashboard tripod, which is going to make my life a lot easier if I'm going to start. I'm going to keep doing these Let's Drive videos. You know, a lot of people do the Let's Play videos where they play video games and chat. Well. I'm doing Let's Drive videos, and it's probably a little bit dark right now, because it's sun's still uh, on its way up, but uh, anyway, anyway, that's besides the point. Let's get to the real good stuff. So we're going to talk about line level versus mic level in this episode, and we're going to talk about, um, you know, why that matters, why that's important, and share a little bit, uh, a little story with you. Um, about how to use an insert send or an insert IO. So, okay, so last night I went to uh, my buddy's church out in Newton, Massachusetts, and had a little family movie night. And um, uh, it, w it was good. So, m my buddy Mario, um, a, f a few months back, asked me some questions about uh, insert send. So, what, what happened was they just got compressors, outboard compressors, like DBX 166s or something like that, some sort of DBX uh, stereo compressor so they could do two channels per uh, per device. So they got these new compressors and they knew that the microphone needed to get into the compressor before it got to the mixer, or that's kind of what they thought in their head, which is kind of, that's kind of right thinking, right? You want to make sure your signal path is logical and you hit your compressor and everything. So what they did was they ran the microphones from the snake directly into the compressor, right? Because they saw XLR, oh, XLR, microphone's XLR, let's plug that in. Plugged it in, then they plugged the compressor into their analog mixer. And so Mario calls up, he's like, Nate, it sounds really noisy, like you can hear all this like hiss in the background, and like I know when you add new things to the to the to the signal chain you're gonna hear more, but this was like obnoxious hiss, right? And so I said, Whoa, okay, wait a minute. So you got this hiss, what now what happened here? And he told me how they just hooked up the compressors and he explained how it was plugged in. And he knew enough to to be able to say, like, yeah, we plugged it directly in. And said, okay, well, there's your problem right there. So this is why line level versus mic level matters. That compressor is looking to see um, a, a, a line level input. And what they did was plug a microphone, a dynamic mic. And what you need to remember is microphone level is in the order of 0 0.0775 volts. Less than, less than a volt. We're talking really low level here. 0 0.0775 volts, mic level. That's mic level. That's in the order of like one watt. Now you have line level, which is about 24 volts, right? So that is way, way more volts. So you got 24 volts. It's That's in the order of about 10 watts. Um, if you're comparing watts, usually we don't think of line level and mic level in terms of watts. That's not a normal thing. I'm just throwing that out there as a as a comparison, talking about the difference between basically one watt of energy versus 10 watts of energy, or 0.0775 volts of energy versus 24 volts. So 
this gets a little bit into the electricity there, but it's important to um, to realize why this doesn't work. So what happened was, why was he getting the, the static and that hiss? So when you turn, when you plug in a very, very weak, very low signal into uh, a compressor that's expecting line level and it's very low, what do you have to do? You have to turn that way up. And, and when you're turning the volume uh, or the level of that device way up, not only are you turning the, the weak, weak microphone signal up, but you're also turning up the noise floor. And that's what Mario was hearing. He was hearing the noise floor. So I posted to the Live Sound 101 community on Google Plus uh, a little graphic, um, courtesy of Yamaha, that I grabbed from one of the Yamaha manuals. And it's just a simple schematic diagram of an insert I.O. cable. And that, that is what I, I suggested Mario get. I said, get an insert I.O. cable, plug that to the insert of whatever channel, if you, you know, your mic's coming into the mixer on mic on line, channel one, get an insert I.O. cable, plug it into insert send or insert I.O. of um, channel one, and then plug the, uh, so this insert I.O. cable is, is a Y cable, it goes from a TRS, a quarter inch, to a TS, uh, quarter inch, but it breaks it out into two TS quarter inch, so it's essentially a Y cable, and so it has the input and the output all baked into that one TRS, right? That's and that's where it gets a little confusing to somebody who, you know, th thinks very logically through the signal chain, but doesn't have a knowledge of pro audio equipment. Is that you know you might not know that. So you get one of these fancy inserts and Y cables, and they're only a few bucks. You know, you can get one from from Hosa or, or, or whatever. They're not they're not super expensive at all, but they are definitely a specialized thing for a certain application. And if you've never used them before, you probably don't have one lying around. Um, so the important thing to remember is the TRS, tip ring sleeve. The tip goes to the send, right? So the tip goes to the input of an outboard device like a compressor. The ring goes to the output, or comes from the output, back into the mixer again. So anyway, check that out. Check out the uh, the insert I/O cable over on uh, the Live Sound 101 community if you're if you're interested in that. And um, that will conclude this edition of the vlog. Hope you found this information helpful. And I'll probably do another one on my way home today and give you a little bit more. Uh, info as to what I think I'm going to be doing with this vlog and why I think it's going to be important and how you can benefit from it or decide if you want to benefit from it. Alright, have a good day.